and welcome to my wonder world. Later, <laughs> a cat that's got that's got four ears. <laughs> that's a true story. And uh, and the wonderful heebie-jeebies. But we'll start off with a monster. It's funny the way that people love horror movies. It's as though they, they love to be frightened. Well, here's a man who loves to frighten people. John Dibbs specialises in hiring himself out as a monster. Our stout-hearted reporter, Alita Fay, went out to meet him and put him through his paces. that when in need, you should take refuge in a church. But today, something wasn't quite right. same person. I'm John Dibbs from the Hire a Monster Service. But how? It's all a matter of makeup. How many characters do you impersonate? Three in the one hour. And to liven up these parties, they go dead by about half past ten. And so are they adult parties? And children and mostly adult parties, house parties, etc. And you just frighten the people and they like it. That's right. Everybody loves horror stories and horror films. And isn't that reaction, you see? <laughs> How much do people pay you to terrorise them? Fifty-five dollars for an hour. I do three monsters, a full continuous hour show. That's awful. Look, I'm really glad you're not a monster, but... Look, Are you sure? I have to go now. Goodbye. <laughs> Gee, I'm glad to get out of that place. Oh, hi, John. How did you get out of your costume so fast? Mm -hmm. um, John? John! Help! Help! <laughs> we haven't seen her for ages. <laughs> Be back in a moment. <laughs> sit down, sit woody. This is, is um this is a good story. This is uh, about the city of Sydney, which of course has a really fascinating history, particularly that part of it that deals with Circular Quay in Sydney. And it used to be the port for all the old sailing ships. A great part of that history has now been put together in this fabulous book. It's called From the Key. And it's written, I'm quite proud to say, by our very own producer of Wonderworld, a guy called Harvey Shaw. 
And it's largely made up of an incredible collection of very old photographs that, that were lost for many years and they've only recently been discovered. Reporter Morris Parker takes a look at Sydney's fascinating history. Photography in Australia began in the 1850s. With the introduction of photography, people could take photographs of everyday things and everyday happenings. And the original photographs were found on things such as this, known as glass plates. However, in the 1930s, this type of film was used, known as celluloid film. Therefore, there was no need for the glass plates. A lot of them were destroyed, lost, put in cupboards and never to be seen again. However, one great glass plate collection has just recently come to light. Where did you find the photographs for the book? Well, the photographs came from a huge collection of glass plates called the Sydney Harbour Trust Collection. They've been compiled over a hundred years and they'd been lost for many, many years and I heard about them and I started a long search for them and I eventually found them in that building there, in a little tiny locked storeroom. From the time that I found the photographs to the time the book came out was just over two years, mainly involved in, on that time mainly went in research. This is what Macquarie Street looked like in March 1871. And if you look behind me, this is what Macquarie Street looks like now. Amazing. Farewell to old England forever. Farewell to my rum cows as well. Farewell to the well-known old Bailey, where I once used to cut such a swell. What's to be gained from all these old photographs? There's lots of things. First of all, you get to see what life was like before living memory, right back in the early days before anyone alive today was born. You get to see what the ships were like and you learn what sort of ships came to Port Jackson, which was the lifeline of Australia, the first port in the whole of this country. Perhaps one of the most amazing photographs of Sydney is this one here. It's taken by a panorama camera and it shows a 180 degrees view of Sydney in 1900. If you have a look closely, a lot of things are missing. For instance, the Harbour Bridge, the Opera House, Centrepoint Tower, and all the high-rise buildings. Singing to rely, who rely, attitude. Singing to rely, who rely. Singing to rely, who rely, attitude. And we're bound for Botany Bay. 1900, there was an enormous plague came in on rats brought in from ships from India and Ceylon and the plague swept through Sydney and it caused 50 or 60 people to die in the first few months and the white people were furious. They believed it was the Chinese who'd settled in a little Chinatown of their own down near the rock in Sydney Harbour. And they even had a royal commission to uh, establish whether the Chinese were in fact the carriers of the plague or the cause of the plague. They weren't. There's the captain as is our commander. There's the bosun and all the ship's crew. There's the first and the second class passengers knows what we poor convicts goes through. Is there a need for a book such as this? It's always good for people to be able to pluck a book off their shelves and say, this is what it looked like a hundred years ago. looking at old pictures. Good on you, Harvey. That's terrific. That's the end of the show. Until next time, always remember, the world really is wonderful. Bye-bye. Simon of the Gang will be back with more Wonderworld in a few moments. Thank you.